Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Plays and Fades, week two edition. For those of you tuning in for the first time, you missed out on the Jaguars defense last week. Had them as one of the plays of the week, and they went bananas. But anyway, that was in the past. Let's move on over to week two. We'll start off with the quarterback position. Old Bolo tie, Phillip Rivers. All right, here's the thing. Now, if you want to play Rodgers, Breeze, Brady, or Ryan in the two highest scoring games on the slate, by all means. Rivers is strictly a price play. He's priced right below Blake Bortles and Joe Flacco. For $7,000 on FanDuel, I'd much rather go there so I could get a little crazy with the rest of my lineup. Last week, Phillip Rivers threw three touchdowns against the number one pass defense in the NFL, Denver Broncos. On top of all that, his matchup is really good. The Miami Dolphins ranked 25th against the pass last year. That's who we got for quarterback this week. Let's move on over to running back. And this week, I like me some Ezekiel Elliott. I hope Zeke is doing a lot of this this week because that means he's scoring touchdowns. So I know what you might be thinking. The Devon Broncos had the best defense in the NFL last year. But that's where you're wrong because they had the best defense against the pass last year. The way you beat the Devon Broncos last year was on the ground. Denver Broncos ranked 21st against the run in DVOA. I think Zeke is going to be low on because everyone thinks the Denver Broncos defense is that great. And it is, but not against the run. I'm playing Zeke this week. Now we're gonna get right into the wide receivers. And this week, bonus. You're not getting one, but you're getting two because I love it that much. Gonna go with Julio Jones. <laughs> and then we're going with good old Jordy Nelson. The Green Bay Packers and the Atlanta Falcons last year combined for more than 65 points in both games that they played. Jordy Nelson had four catches for 94 yards and a touchdown with a Kevlar vest. And Julio Jones, I mean, he's the real deal. Probably the best receiver in football. I think both Aaron Rodgers and Matt Ryan are going to have monster weeks. And these are the number one targets for both of these guys. The matchups are just so damn good that I couldn't decide on just one. So I gave you two. Play them both. Now we're going to get to the tight end position, and I know what you're going to be thinking. Didn't you tell us to play him last week? Yes, and you got to play him again this week. Zach Ertz. Zach Ertz got eight targets last week and converted them all for catches. A stat line of eight catches and 93 yards. He's going up against the Kansas City Chiefs, who last week shut down Gronkowski. And last year with a fifth team against the tight end. But all that is going to change because they lost their go-to guy at stopping the tight end. Safety, Eric Berry. Eric Berry is probably the most important player on the Chiefs defense. And without him out there, I think Zach Ertz is going to have himself a day. Last but not least, the defense. And I'm going with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, I think this week, Tampa Bay has a great matchup against the Chicago Bears, who are led by quarterback Mike Glennon. Who knows Mike Glennon better than the Tampa Bay Bucks, who drafted him and had him for four years. After not playing in week one, I think you're going to get a low number on all players on Tampa Bay, including their defense. Now that we're done with the plays this week, let's move on over to fades. Guys that I'm staying away from. We'll start off with quarterback Dak Prescott. As I said earlier about the Broncos defense, don't play quarterbacks against them. They're the best team against the pass. Next up is the running back that I'm going to fade, and that is rookie Leonard Fournette. Fournette last week had 30 touches against the Houston Texans, and a lot of it had to do with game script. The Jacksonville Jaguars jumped out to a huge lead. Leonard Fournette benefited from two defensive touchdowns by his defense. That big early lead for the Jacksonville Jaguars was one of the big reasons for his success. But at his price, I'd much rather look elsewhere. Next up is a wide receiver that I'm fading this week. And you gotta bear with me because it's a big name and it might scare you. Mike Evans. I gotta start by saying this. I think Mike Evans might have a big game. But Jordy Nelson costs $200 less than him and Julio Jones is $300 more. I'd much rather find a way to get those two guys in my lineup than playing Mike Evans. Let's move on over to tight end. I'm fading Jack Doyle. If you guys remember last week with T.Y. Hilton, no luck, no hope. I'm not playing you if Andrew Luck's not the quarterback. Not only do the Colts not have Andrew Luck, they're playing the Arizona Cardinals at home. Arizona on the road last year gave up two catches per game to opposing tight ends. Easy fade for me this week. And now last but not least, the defense that I'm going to stay away from, the Minnesota Vikings. One thing you always need to account for when you're playing DFS, those standalone games. Monday Night Football and Sunday Night Football. They are the two most popular games on the slate. And since they're standalone games, everybody's watching them. And they influence a lot of the public's thoughts. You see it in the point spreads and you see it in the players' salaries when you're looking on FanDuel and DraftKings. This is an easy fade for me. I don't want to play any defense that's playing the Steelers at home. So there you have it, guys. Week 2's edition of the Plays and Fades for DFS. If you guys want to learn more about DFS, I have a podcast called Degeneration Bets. The link to the podcast is in the bio below. And as always, you can find me at LamVM10 on Twitter, Snapchat, and Instagram. And I'll see you guys next week.